Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a BIMI supported SVG logo file. Now there's certain requirements laid out by the BIMI working group as to what SVG file will be accepted by the certificate authorities. Now an SVG is basically a scalable vector graphic. It's different to popular bitmap formats such as uh, GIFs, JPGs, PNG files, because vector graphics are made out of lines and curves, which can be scaled infinitely without the loss of detail. Uh, it's often smaller in the file size. It loads much quicker. And as we touched on before, it adapts to responsive sizing. So it's great for use as a logo and within digital environments. So Today we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator to make the changes to our SVG file. So the first thing we want to be doing is inspecting the layers panel. So we've got our layers panel loaded up here. We want to make sure there's no bitmaps, uh, linked files such as a PNG file, a text or groups. So if your logo is image based or it has an image within it, so if we look through our layers panel here, we've got certain paths. There seems to be a linked file. So if I just turn that on and we select it, we can see that it's actually a backgrounds or a JPEG file. It is something that your machine is linking through to. Now, if we were to export this as an SVG, it wouldn't work. It is not currently made up out of curves and lines. So we need to make sure that it is a vector shape. The best way if you find that your logo has linked files within it is to contact the original designer that created your logo. If you don't have that benefit then you can use the image trace as we've got up here or in the quick actions down here to be creating a outline of the shape. Um, it may produce a good result, but like I say, the best outcome you can take is to be contacting the original designer. So we've now got our shape traced and it's not currently a linked file, which is good. So another thing to think about is text texts within Illustrator or whatever your graphics editing program you may use is not a vector shape and we need to make sure that we create outlines uh, because otherwise it's not going to know how to scale up and down it will remain at the same size or become distorted in certain perspectives. So we've selected what is our text layer and we can see within the properties that is a type layer. And we're gonna to go to our type and create outlines. And you'll see that the text then becomes outlined. It is made up of shapes. And we can see that within the group here, it is compound paths, vector shapes that can scale infinitely. So we're going to select all of our layers so, and we're going to right click and ungroup. And now all of our paths are on one separate layer. Now we may go into our text because that is a grouped path as well. Right click, ungrouped. And it's all now within that one layer. Now, some top tips for displaying your logo in the correct format, we need to be thinking what purpose this will be used for. Now, primarily it's going to be used within the email client and often this will have a circular crop. So it's best to use logos with a square aspect ratio. So a ratio of one to one. We can be checking if it is a square format simply because a square is the same height and width. So if we go into our edit artboards, so you'll find that in the artboards section, 
we can see that it does have the same width and height. Our logo is going to be displayed primarily at a small size. So I would advise you to be exporting your logo at 40 to 80 pixels high and wide. So we've got a little chain icon on here. So if I click 80, it will be the same for the height. And we'll then need to be scaling our artwork as necessary. So we'll select all our layers and just shift it down. To make sure that it's 80, we can see this is correct here. So now we've got our logo as vector shapes. It's the correct ratio in that it's one to one. My final check within the layers panel, and this is something I personally do, is thinking about that the logo is going to be cropped via a circle. So I'm just going to turn on my circular layer. This is just a simple circle that is, so we bring it to the top, we can see, a circle that is 80 by 80 pixels. And we can see immediately that if the text was to remain here, it may get cropped. So you need to think about that within your designs. Either you need to alter it or you need to be using a different design. But it is worth considering that your design needs to be exactly what your trademarked logo is with your trademark body. Otherwise, it cannot be verified. So now we may delete some aspects of these. Oops, I don't need any of that. Just got our logo. We're now ready to export. So what we're going to do is file, click Save As. And I'm going to select it as here. Select it as an SVG. I'm going to save that. It's already on my desktop. Now you'll come with a dialog box and you need to select the profile in a little drop down for SVG Tiny 1.2. This is the profile that has been specified by the BIMI working group. And within the options, image location, I'm going to click preserve. So we've got Tiny 1.2, preserve, we know it's an SVG. And we're just going to check the code. So this is loads up in our text editor. And we're going to check for a couple of things. The version is 1.2. We've got a tiny base profile, tiny. And on first view, we've got a logo that is made up of paths. So vector shapes, there is no bitmap or PNG or linked files embedded within the document. So this is now ready to go. I'm going to close that up and press OK. And we're now ready to alter some of the code within a text editor. 